Well, by the time the video comes out, this video right here, the rut lockdown is going to be happening in a lot of areas around the country. What does a rut lockdown mean? It means a lot of bucks are getting lucky. All bucks are getting lucky. You know, a lot of people don't realize that all bucks participate in the rut. Each buck will breed between two and four does in the primary rut. It's not necessarily true that older bucks do the most breeding. In fact, a lot of older bucks become that way because they're shy. Some don't even participate in the breeding. There are studies that show that, but bottom line is there's some super shy bucks out there that don't participate in the breeding. If they're not running around chasing does, they're not getting shot at. And so it's not necessarily true. It's young bucks participate, old bucks participate. And during the rock lockdown, just about every buck participates because it's at the beginning of the peak rut. Yeah, the pre-rut, does aren't ready, bucks are ready. Mature bucks are really ready because they know the game. These young bucks don't know what to do. They're running around. We've seen some bucks recently that running around that I think they honestly don't know what to do. They have these urges. It's nature's calling. They just don't know how to handle it. But those big bucks do. They're making rubs, scrapes, and they're starting to sniff around does. They're traveling a little bit and they're really, really searching. And all of a sudden it happens. Quite a few does start coming into estrus. This is not the peak of the rut where there's a lot of does coming in after us. It's that beginning of the ramp up where a lot are coming in and there's a lot more does and bucks. So that means that there's a lot of does coming in after us. There's plenty of bucks to go around for those does. And therefore it appears that nothing's going on because these bucks are tending these does for two or three days and not, not a lot's going on. Even people think they stop hitting scrapes, which means they're not scraping the ground with their toes and their hooves. What they're really doing though, is they just come and leave their scent on the vine or the licking branch. We use vertical licking branches, um, especially in mock vines or branches that are um, similar to your area that deer rub and scrape under. Uh, jack pine up north, white oak branches, hemlock branches, red cedar, whatever it might be. But uh, we use vines in area because we have them. But bottom line is they'll leave their scent and they'll move on. And what happens is these bucks are locked down with does, seems like nothing's going on, and it pays to be in the stand all day. But that doesn't mean you're in the stand all day, a stand all day. Instead, you're looking for that X of movement. So these are these first all day sit opportunities, meaning you're sitting somewhere in the morning, somewhere in the afternoon and evening. Doesn't mean three stands, but what you're doing a lot of times you're hunting your bedding areas in the morning the problem is it gets closer to dark deer are leaving those bedding areas and going somewhere else the closer to dark it gets the more likely you're not going to see deer the more you need to be in that bottom of the funnel of daylight movement that relates to a lot of deer coming into natural food sources or man-made food sources like food plots planted food sources like soft mass trees apple trees crab trees crab apple trees pear trees whatever it might be but you're at that bottom of the funnel of daylight movement whether it's on private land, public land. So that requires a lot of times two different stand locations. So lots of bucks getting lucky. All of a sudden they break free. They're still hitting scrapes. So it doesn't, it's not a bad idea to still hunt scrapes. These are the first day, all day sit opportunities, meaning a buck could come from a doe at any time of the day and look, he's going to be looking for his next doe. It's gonna take him a few more days to find his next doe, a receptive doe, and to be able to tender and breeder. And then if you have that perfect stand that's in that X of the movement, meaning you have an X of food sources, bedding area, and you're in between, not at bedding, not at food source, but you're in thick cover, a place that you can imagine a mature buck popping out. If it's wide open timber, he might not be popping out in that location. But if you have that perfect X, then it pays to be on that same stand all day long because you can relate to morning bedding and afternoon food source movement. But I really, I think about the stands and blinds that I have on, on my properties, and I would say 10 to 15% of all stand locations are appropriate for sitting in from dark to dark. Unfortunately, the majority of hunters sit in one stand all day, and it only relates to one time of the day. And if it's an afternoon food source movement, and you go in there in the morning, there's a lot of times you're spooking those deer out that were relating to that food source movement because they're hanging around in the morning hours. You spook them off, they're not coming back in the evening. So you ruin a stand and you're sitting in it all day. So morning bedding, afternoon food source, sometimes that relates to exit movement. The rut lockdown is just for a few days because once those bucks come off that first doe, they're actively searching for the next and that's when there's no guarantee. They're, it's a lot more competitive for does coming into heat. That's more of a random time period and that's when it falls into the peak rut and you're getting into peak rut, 
activity where bucks are moving, flying around all day long, and that's a different story. It pays to be patient during the rut lockdown because deer bucks are with does, but they're gonna break free and they can move at any time. When you get into the peak rut, it just intensifies. Unfortunately, a lot of people not only miss the pre-rut, they miss the rut lockdown. And so all of a sudden the peak rut hits and they say, oh, the rut's beginning. Folks, it began two weeks ago, 20th, 22nd in October of October in Southeast Minnesota, Southwest Wisconsin, where we're at Southern Michigan, over into Northern Pennsylvania, New York, Vermont, New Hampshire. It's beginning the end of October. And then the rut lockdown for us in our area is the first few days of November. You could fast forward that to the 7th, 8th in Kentucky, West Virginia. Fast forward that about 10 days later, and that's when that, that rut lockdown is taking place. But you have to notice peak rut for seven to 10 days, rut lockdown, or sorry, pre-rut for seven to 10 days, rut lockdown, and then the peak rut. It only happens for a few days, and then again, boy, the wheels come off. It's same hunting strategies into the peak rut as a rut lockdown for the most part. It's just it's very important to exercise a lot of patience during the rut lockdown because you never know when that buck's gonna come off and it seems like there's not much going on. So don't miss the rut lockdown, let alone the pre-rut. Know when the peak rut starts, that's the third phase of the rut, not the first. And so it's important to know your phases of the rut. That's why I encourage you to check out HuntWise and RutCast that I helped develop. HuntCast, the weather algorithm formula that I wrote for October Life or Outdoor Life in 2015 November rut issue. We infuse that into that hunt cast. That's the way I've been hunting for over three years or 30 years, three decades. It works. That rut system works. It'll help you maximize your time of field, grasp the most opportunity you can to make sure that you find your highest level of potential of success, not only during the rut, but using hunt cast all season long. And of course I have my web classes, how to hunt the rut. And I'm gonna keep pushing those. Those are me. That's what I put into. That's what I love, my passion. That's what helps me find success every year, and I want you guys to find success. So check out those tools, whether it's RutCast, HuntCast, or my web classes to help you out. But most of all, rut lockdown, it's happening now. Get excited for the peak rut right around the corner, the post rut, and I know a lot of gun seasons are coming up. Unfortunately, Minnesota, their gun season is right smack dab in the rut the first Saturday in November. But bottom line, there's a lot of hunting opportunity. Make sure you understand the rut, which phase you're in, and you'll find success not only this year, but every season beyond. And that's the ultimate goal of this channel, myself, is to help you guys and gals find success this season beyond. Folks, I wanna make sure you check out my web class video series, whether it's how to design your food plot program or how to design your property in general. And we have a new one coming out that'll be how to hunt the rut. But these bucks back here are testament. Some of these bucks go back to 93. They're even in different states. I urge you to check out those web classes that you can help yourself, help your land, help your hunt. The link is in the description. And also for those that have tried them out, I encourage you to offer some feedback in the comments below. Thank you.